So after this video lecture, students will be able to define polyprotic acids. You'll be able to calculate pH and concentrations for ion species present uh, during the ionization process associated with polyprotic acids, and you'll be able to calculate percent ionization problems. Okay, so percent ionization is basically the degree to which a specific acid has ionized um, in solution. Okay, and so percent ionization is going to be equal to the ionized acid concentration um, divided by the initial concentration of the acid multiplied by 100. Okay, so when we look at this from the perspective of the species present in solution, we know that HA is going to break into H plus and A minus um, in solution. Okay, so uh, the species that we actually care about, um, of course, is our H plus ion um, and the initial concentration of our HA. Okay, so notice that not symbol here is indicating the initial concentration of HA. Um, and basically, the approach to these is, is going to be um, you're needing to solve for H plus at equilibrium. And you can compare that directly to the initial concentration of HA and just subsequently get your percent ionization for that specific acid. Now, obviously, this is mostly uh, an approach we take when dealing with weak acids because their degree of ionization is not 100% like with strong acids. Um, so this will be something that you will see over and over again with weak acid problems. So let's go ahead and use Ka to calculate the percent ionization um, of a weak acid. Okay, so we want to cal calculate the percent ionization of 0 0.50 molar HF solution with a Ka of 7.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so HF um, is going to ionize into H plus and F minus in solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out this ice table for uh, this setup. Okay, and we know that our initial concentration is, of our HF is 0 0.50 molar. Our initial concentrations of our H plus and F minus are zero respectively. Now we know HF is going to decrease, uh, and we know that H plus and F minus are going to increase, and that will give us the following equilibrium concentrations. Um, now, Ka in this context is going to be H plus times F minus concentration, all divided by the concentration of HA. Okay, and we've been given our Ka value, so, and we know our equilibrium um, uh, setups here, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug those in. So Ka is going to be equal to x squared over 0 0.50 minus x, um, which is all going to be equal to that 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4 Ka value. Now, because Ka is so small, we're going to go ahead and drop x um, down here. And we're going to end up with x squared over 0 0.50 equal to 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, um, and if we go ahead and we manipulate this, we end up with x squared is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4. And taking the square root of both sides, x is going to equal to 0 0.019 molar. So now that we have our uh, concentration of x, of course we're going to go ahead and um, utilize this value uh, to figure out our percent ionization. Now remember, percent ionization um, is equal to my H plus concentration divided by my initial concentration of the HF times 100. Okay, so we just solve for X. X corresponds to my H plus concentration. Um, so percent ionization is going to be equal to 0 0.019 divided by 0 0.50 times 100. Okay, and this is going to give us 3.8% ionized. Okay, now guys, in this context, what I want you to notice or understand um, is that the check that we do here um, is basically the same math or, or the same approach that we would take to calculate um, our percent ionization. So the reality of it is, is that we're getting a two for one deal here in the sense that uh, checking if the dropping of X was acceptable is going to be essentially the same thing as checking our or calculating our percent ionization. And that works because we're talking about uh, monoprotic acids um, where basically the difference here ends up being equal to X. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at a slightly different problem. In this case, they are asking us to calculate our Ka from our percent ionization. They've provided us with our percent ionization. They've cal 
they've provided us with the concentration of our acid. And notice they've told us the name of the acid. In this context, lactic acid, um, it's not one of the memorized ones that you guys have been required to know for the strong set. Okay, so we can infer that it's a weak set. Now, additionally, guys, um, uh, lactic acid is, you know, obviously going to be represented by this uh, formula here. However, uh, we can treat it as a monoprotic acid and, and uh, set it up or, or um, set up our ice table using a generic acid uh, relationship. Okay, so HA is going to be equal to um, H plus plus A minus. Okay, so in this context, we have our um, values here. Uh, that allow us to calculate or set up our Ka. Um, that's going to be equal to H plus, A minus, and the concentration of HA. So this is our equilibrium expression. Now guys, remember um, I am using HA as a generic representation of this acid. Um, if you guys wanted to use this formula uh, all the way out, you could totally do that as well if that's less confusing for you. But for my purposes, this is what I like to do. Okay, so I'm going to set up my ice table. Okay, we're going to assume these changes. Um, are going to be what occurs, um, and then 0 0.100 minus x, and x and x are what we're going to end up for our uh, equilibrium values. Okay, so now we may be sitting here saying, hey, we don't have a Ka, we don't have more information, uh, what are we going to do next? Okay, well, remember that they've given us our percent ionization. Remember that percent ionization is equal to H plus concentration at equilibrium divided by um, the initial concentration of our HA times 100. Okay, so honestly, we know this value, we know this value. The only value that we don't know is this H plus. Okay, so if we go ahead um, and we plug this uh, equation's values in uh, based on the ones that we actually know, um, we can go ahead and um, figure out our H plus concentration at equilibrium. Okay, so if we go ahead and we manipulate this, and basically divide out the 100 and multiply by 0.1, we end up with our H plus equaling 3.7 times 10 to the negative third molar. Okay, so now we have our H plus concentration, and if we know our H plus concentration, um, that's going to equal X as well. Okay, and if we know X, we can plug it into our variables at equilibrium and then plug those values into our Ka. Okay, so um, if we go ahead and we do this plug-in, what we end up with is uh, 3.7 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, and we're going to square that because we're going to have the same value for our H plus concentration and our A minus concentration. Okay, and then uh, 0.100 minus 3.7 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, we plug those in. Okay, and we plug all this into our calculator. And this is going to give us 1.42 times 10 to the negative fourth um, as our Ka value for this problem. Okay, pay attention to the details of what they provide to you um, and make sure that you guys are familiar with the equations um, so that you can derive some of the things that may not uh, be clearly or explicitly stated in the problem. Okay, so polyprotic acids are acids that are capable of providing more than one proton in solution. Um, so subsequently what they will have is they will have uh, multiple Ka uh, A values uh, for each of the protons that can be uh, produced in solution from each species. Okay, now each of these disassociations, so K1, K2, um, will always disassociate in a stepwise fashion, meaning that um, the first proton to be given away, that's going to be the one that uh, gets completely given away before the successive ones that come after. Okay, and also guys, uh, something else to remember or to keep in the back of your head is that the first disassociation um, of, a, of the protons um, is usually the main contributor to pH, meaning it's the one that puts the most H plus into solution, so it usually dictates the pH. Okay, now an example of a diprotic acid is carbonic acid. Um, and basically carbonic acid is produced uh, when we take uh, carbon dioxide and dissolve it in water. Uh, we produce carbonic acid um, and then carbonic acid uh, can break down into these two species, okay, with this species here being able to then act as an acid itself and break down. Now what I want you to notice here is the difference in the Ka values for each of these successive ionizations. Notice that this Ka value is much larger than this one. 
Okay, and that's why we say that the first disassociation is going to be the one that's the main contributor to pH. Why? Because obviously the significant quantity of H plus that's put into solution um, is going to be coming from that first ionization. Okay, and uh, an example of a triprotic acid is phosphoric acid. Uh, you guys will also find this in, in soda. Um, basically, uh, this uh, H3PO4 is able to give away three protons. Okay, this is the first ionization. Second ionization occurs with uh, the species, one of the ion species that are produced from the first ionization. Okay, and then the third uh, ionization process occurs uh, with one of the ionic species that's produced in the second ionization process. Okay, and you end up with um, these species in uh, the solution as well. Okay, and again, guys, notice that as we go through the ionization process, the first ionization step that's going to produce the most H, the next one. Okay, even more, third one, etc. Okay, so guys, typically um, the uh, polyprotic acids that you guys will be dealing with um, are not very strong acids. Um, however, one of the acids that is quite strong, that is a polyprotic acid, is H2SO4, okay, which is with its first ionization being um, basically 100%. Um, as it is one of the strong acids. So um, just kind of put this one in the back of your mind as being a polyprotic uh, strong acid. Um, however, the first ionization is the uh, main contributor to the H plus concentration. The successive ionizations will obviously be weaker. But um, other than that, most polyprotic acids are relatively weak. Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm calculating the pH of a 5 molar phosphoric acid solution. Um, and then subsequently calculating the concentrations of each of these species that remain uh, in solution. Okay, so um, obviously we're going to need uh, three ionization uh, values or Ka values, um, and each one of those obviously is something that you could look up um, in the back of uh, an appendix or something that I'd provide to you in the terms of practice problems. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken H3PO4 and I've set up the first ionization uh, process. I've set up an ice table with the corresponding values, and then I have written the equilibrium expression um, as follows. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plug my values in from my ice table into my equilibrium expression, and that's going to give me the following. Okay, now, because Ka is so small, I'm going to go ahead and drop x. Okay, um, and if I were to go ahead and solve this for x, um, x is going to equal 0 0.19 molar. Okay, so at this point I have um, done these problems several times, guys, so you know that uh, basically you're solving for x, you're going to cross multiply up and take the square root of both sides. Okay, and then obviously you want to check this and make sure that the assumption you made here by dropping x was acceptable. Um, when you do check that, you'll find it's under 5%, so this is okay to do. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at what we can solve from this information. Okay, so uh, now that we know x, we can go ahead and calculate our concentration of our H3PO4. Okay, that's going to be equal to 5.0 minus um, our 0 0.19 molar, okay, which is going to give us 4.8 uh, molar as our concentration. Okay, so we've figured out one of our values here. Um, we can know our uh, concentration of our H2PO4 minus uh, because x is equal to it, as we see from our ice table here, um, 0 0.19 molar. Okay, and then our H plus concentration here is what's going to allow us to solve for our pH of this solution. So pH equals negative log of our 0 0.19 which is going to give us 0.72 as our pH. Now, the reason why I'm able to take this and solve uh, for my pH now is because as we've discussed, when we're dealing with um, uh, polyprotic acid, that first initial ionization is going to be the um, producer of the H+, um, in a way that actually affects pH in a, in a noticeable way. Um, so I can go ahead and calculate pH from this first ionization step. Okay, so calculated pH calculated the concentration of this species and this species. So now, um, obviously, I have some other ionization processes that are going to occur, okay? And they're going to start, this next one's going to start with this species that we see right here. Okay, so I've taken um, the uh, product here. Um, that's going to be our next ionization step. Um, and so this H2, one of these protons is going to be given away, and we're going to end up with these two species in solution. Okay, now, based on the fact that the 
Ka value here is so low, we know that the production of this species is going to be relatively uh, small in terms of concentration. And our H plus concentration, although it will theoretically increase, it's not going to increase in an appreciable way. So what we're going to do here is for our concentrations for our H plus and our H2PO4 minus, we're just going to use the um, concentrations of H plus and H2PO4 minus that we obtained from the previous um, step. Okay, so we're going to plug those numbers in here and we obtain the following um, relationship. Okay, and so what we can notice here is that these two are going to cancel and that the concentration of the HPO4 2 minus is going to equal 6.2 times 10 to the negative eighth. Okay, so now that we've calculated that species um, and know its concentration, we can go ahead and move on to the final ionization um, that will allow us to calculate this uh, concentration here. So again, uh, we write out our uh, ionization product um, and we have our Ka. We're going to go ahead and write our equilibrium uh, expression for this process and that's going to give us the following expression um, with uh, keeping in mind that once again we're just going to use the values from before. Remember H plus, we're just going to continue to use um, the original H plus value uh, that we calculated up here in the first step. Um, our HPO4 2 minus, we just calculated that in the step before this one. Um, so we're going to go ahead and plug those into our expression along with our, our Ka value. And this is what we end up here. Okay, if we go ahead and we solve for our PO4 3 minus, Okay, by manipulating what we have here, we end up with 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 um, molar. Okay, so we've gone ahead um, and we've calculated all of these concentrations as well as our pH. Now, what I want you guys to notice is that the reason why we're able to accomplish these problems in the manner that we are is because, remember, each successive ionization um, is going to be occurring to a smaller and smaller amount, right? Okay, so we go from 10 to the negative 3 to 10 to the negative 8 to 10 to the negative 11. Okay, so the production of H plus in each successive ionization is going to be significantly, significantly smaller, um, while the production of the ions that are going to be being uh, producers of H plus in successive steps is also um, pretty much negligible. Okay, so these concentration values, notice, um, they're getting significantly smaller over time. Um, and this is why we're able to make some of the assumptions that we have. So this is how you treat polyprotic acids. Okay, um, make sure that you um, basically treat them as follows. Always check your 5% rule um, before you proceed, but otherwise you should be okay with uh, this type of calculation.